Yes, it was the 1970s, the apex of human civilization, where the rock and roll scene was all about tight pants and high hair. And of course, with their hit song, Jump In My Car, the Ted Mulry gang shot out of nowhere to be the biggest band in the country. And joining us now to tell their story are Herm Kovac on the drums and Gary Dixon on the guitar from the Ted Mulry gang. And of course, we have, just when you thought this couldn't get any bigger, we have flown in another big celebrity direct from Worm Adelaide, where he's at the World Music Festival. Yeah. He has come here. He didn't even have time to put on any pants. <laughs> it's John O'Coleman. Yeah. Peace, man. Peace. I'm alive. I'm alive. I was about to say, do not let that camera pan down. But I I it's too late for that. It's good to be alive, isn't it? <laughs> That's why it made me swell up a bit. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Herman Gary. Now, tell us a bit about where you guys came from, because uh, you, you started from from, from oblivion? Well, uh, not really, because uh, Ted had a solo career well before well, yeah, us. Forget about him. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's he ever done? <laughs> uh, Ted, no, you have a, a solo career, you're he right. He had a couple of really big hits prior to the band, and uh, he tried to um, go out live and, and, and play live, and he realised that he better get a band together. A so, good looking band, too. Uh, yeah, of course. Well, a good looking yes. drummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. and, and how was it? Who was it that got. Because someone got in his ear, didn't they? And they said, mate, I think you might need to. I think you might need a few guys behind you. Yeah, and so uh, that's how the evolution, uh, evolution of the band came. And uh, her, he... He had pickup bands, right? Yeah. And Les and I were in a band with Malcolm Young um, called Velvet Underground. Yep. And the agency put us on the same bill all the time. And it was in Canberra at Albert Hall. I saw Ted with a pickup band. I kid you not, every song, every member changed instruments, right? Yeah. And Ted's just... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What do you and mean? then I said to Ted afterwards, look, if we're ever on the same bill again, we'll back you. And then we all loved the Beatles, got on really well, yeah. and then it just morphed into the Ted Mulry gang. But also you guys have played some pretty iconic gigs. I mean, I remember I was at a thing shooting for Simon Townsend's Wonderworld and it was the 2SM concert of the decade in Sydney on the on the uh, Sydney Opera House oh, steps. Oh, yeah. Dragon, Thin yeah. Lizzy, JPY. Ted Mulry, and people were literally... Jump, you know, when you played on that uh, floating platform, I saw girls jumping off the off the sort of well, <laughs> and swimming we, over to you. Look well, at that. Well, see the girl that they fish out of that clip. We played in Brisbane um, in November, and she was still and wet. And this middle-aged woman <laughs> came up to us and said, "I'm the girl that dived into the water." Yeah. 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 And where is she now? Well, Give she's in Brisbane. Dive. With, I think our road crew were throwing the girls back in the water. That's enough of that. That's enough of that. But it was an amazing band. I mean, look. The, the thing is that you guys played your instruments, and I'm, as Joe was saying, I've just come back from Adelaide, and it was the same sort of vibe in those days. People were chilled out, they loved it, there was not sort of big beefy security guards, people weren't worried about security as much, but you still had a fantastic time. There's, there we go. Yeah, that's a diner, that's a name. Diner. Oh, <laughs> diner. I see you got to meet her. <laughs> <laughs> so, going back now to 1975, uh, where you've just released Jump In My Car, and then that summer in 1976, the biggest band in the world, I think ABBA, yeah. were bigger in Australia than they were just about anywhere else in the world. They, they, you can't be overstated how huge they were here. They were like the Beatles yeah. here. Mm. And then, bang, jump in my car, knocks them off the number one spot. Suddenly you guys are the biggest First place in, in the Australia. world that happened to. What does that feel yeah, like? Yeah, knocked it off and um, it was great because it wasn't an American band or an English band. It was just a little Australian band with their first single yeah. that knocked it off. But you looked like an international band. That was the amazing thing because, you know, people to me in the UK always said to me, oh, that Ted Murray and Jump In My Car, was that a hit before that other bloke had it with the uh, Knight Rider and the sort David of David Hasselhoff. <laughs> David Hasselhoff. Did, did you ever meet David Hasselhoff? Did he thank you? No, but Gary hasn't been the same since because he really wanted to meet him, you know. <laughs> no, I've never Actually, the best cover no. version of that song was by Chris Bedding. He did yeah. a great version He was of the it. guitarist of Roxy Music. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he did a version. And it was uh, a mild, mild, mild hit in England. But forget, yeah. forget about the covers. What was it like when you guys were number one in the country and suddenly you've gone from, you know, this is stratospheric success that none of you had ever had before. What changed then? Was it... Did you have a whole bunch of, you know, well, groupies? Did you have a whole bunch of accountants? Well, I'll tell or? you what. You know, we played at the Horton Pavilion, right? This is hard to imagine. We'd have to go to Roger Davies, our management, at Bondi. And, our, you know, the armoured vans that take money to the bank? Yeah. We'd have to climb into one of those, go to the Horton, back up to the door, 
and you could not see daylight. Mm. And in Adelaide, once we went to a store promotion in a hire car, um, and after the sh they cancelled the store promotion, there were too many fans there. You could not see daylight. The roof started caving in, <laughs> and we just floored it. And about three or four girls wound up in hospital. Well, you came you came close to breaking the Beatles record in Adelaide. They've still got a picture of the Beatles right. cut out in the Adelaide Post Office or the Town Hall, Adelaide Town Hall, where where you guys were there and the Beatles were there. And now that they've re-releasing. Ted Mulry gang on vinyl. You've Sony. been paying him, have you? No, no. <laughs> do yourself a favour. But Next uh, week on Countdown, this is going to be number one, I guarantee it. But I do remember uh, before Jump Macau actually got on the charts, I remember playing at a gig in at Newtown Leagues Club mm. and there would have been about ten people there. Wow. And I remember the agent walking in and, and coming up to me and saying, congratulations, Gary, and I said, what did I do? <laughs> and he said, well, yeah, jump my cars on uh, the top 40 on 2SM. Oh the we're going to get 20 people next it's week. A, yes. <laughs> right. yeah, but the, ne the following again. week... The so following you went week. from playing for 10 people at yeah. Newtown RE... And the following week he said, to... you're on a, a, an open-air concert at Broadway with uh, Sherbet... ACDC, AC, DC, on that you one. Wow. know. Uh, and we walked out at that concert to a, like... 20,000 people Victoria in the park. Park. Yeah. And being transported in an armoured yeah. car. I saw yeah, you guys right. playing yeah. at Victoria Park. That was another radio station. Yeah, on the concert. rooftop. Yeah. yeah. Was it, were ABBA fans upset that you kicked their, their favourite band off? we the actually spot? got to meet ABBA because of it. Because we, uh, we knocked um, Mamma Mia off number one. Thank, and then the thanks second, for doing that, by the way. <laughs> second single, um, oh, like Darktown Strutter's Ball, could not get past Fernando. <gasps> and we're in Melbourne, and their oh. record company, they were over at the... Um, service desk and we were having tea and brought them over and said, look, we were just telling Benny and Bjorn that you guys knocked Mamma Mia off number one, but you cannot get past Fernando. And they're going, oh, we're so sorry. And they were apologising too. <laughs> but you're still going. That's the main yeah, thing. It was right, just something you know? in the air that night. Um, <laughs> how was it? We've seen a lot of bands lose their lead singers. Lead singers often live fast and die young. How did you go when you lost Ted in 2001? Because oh, Michael Hutchins went. Um, of course, Bon Scott went from ACDC. We Start, didn't play for in about that, 16 that time. years, wasn't there? Because a lot of the singers, lead singers died. Mm. Um, Freddie Mercury, you know. of course, and the bands continued. So you yeah. guys are continuing. You're celebrating, what, 40 years? It's, I think it's even more. <laughs> Let's just say 40 years. <laughs> what, what, it what's, it like when a band, you know, what's it like when a band loses someone who is the sort of... The, well, you know, the face it's kind of like the, the end. You know, it, and it's friend? Look, so you've lost a brother. He yeah. was your best mate. Mm. We'd been together 28 years mm. when and, Ted and, died. And we did have promoters actually trying to get us back together again without Ted. And I just... Yeah. Would we all said no. Right, yeah, no, I'm not... The Ted Murray game without Ted. Okay, you know. let's cut to the chase. You're going back on the road this year, and why did you decide to tour when you've got a band called Ted Murray Gang? Because mm. Zimmer, frame, Zimmer frames are really expensive <laughs> at the moment. We want to get those scooters, you know, with a pole yeah. and the flag. No, I think the Rolling Stones have already, the Rolling Stones have already clinched that. Yeah. That's right. As long as all your venues Look, are wheelchair accessible, I think it should be all right. Exactly. Um, right on, man. What happened is um, Ted played bass. His brother Steve Mulry sings, who can't play bass. So last year, for some gigs, we had Mark Evans from ACDC on bass. Fantastic. Tony Mitchell oh. from Sherbet. We're, we're launching that this Saturday night at the Bridge Hotel in Roselle. Do yourself oh, a favour. And we've got Tony Mitchell from Sherbet helping oh out. Oh, my God, it's bass, a super group. You should, get, you should get the Hoff to come down and do it. <laughs> come on, Hoff, if That's you're right. watching. I know you're well, a big Why don't you come down and yeah, we'll yeah. introduce you as the Hoff? I'm yeah. all the Hoff. Can you play bass? Yeah, I can play bass. Oh, oh right, my God, in. this is turning into a dive. Um, you guys, it's been absolutely fantastic yeah. to have you on. You are genuine rock and roll legends. Been legend. a pleasure, mate. Thank, Thank you very you so much. Herb Kovac Doug and Gary Dixon. <laughs> Gary, Herb Kovac, Gary Dixon. Yeah. 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 Oh, look, <laughs> rock and roll is so polite these days.